MCR 3 you are on day three. Today we're going to talk about function notation. Let's determine the value or expression for x squared minus 2x minus 8 if x equals 2, x equals minus 1, x equals a, and x equals a subtract 2. We've seen this before. When we have an expression and we're asked to determine the value, we are basically telling you that we have an expression y equals x squared minus 2x minus 8 and I am asking you to substitute x equals 2 into that equation to get its value. So to find the value, I'm going to call it y, I'm going to put a 2 wherever I have an x in the original expression. So I put a 2 there, I like brackets a lot, and I put a 2 there. So I substituted the value in for x and then I solve. I have 4 minus 4 minus 8. My answer is negative 8. So I have found the value of the expression when x equals 2. Do the same thing for x equals minus 1. We just always put our value of x into the expression and evaluate. Positive 1, positive 2, take away 8. We end up with a value of negative 5. We've seen this before. We're going to determine the value for the expression that should be for, for the expression when x equals a. It's the same thing. I am putting an a wherever I see an x and I'm going to evaluate that expression. Minus 2a minus 8. So it doesn't really look a lot different. It just has a's in place of x's and I have value, evaluated that expression when x equals a. Same idea when x equals a minus 2, but I make brackets, my friends. If x is equal to a minus 2, I am going to put a minus 2 wherever I have an x value. So I'm going to evaluate x squared minus 2 times x subtract 8. I put a minus 2 wherever I originally had an x. This one just means I have a bit of tidy up to do x equals a minus 2 squared means a minus 2 times a minus 2. Take away 2 times a minus 2. I'm sorry I'm running out of space. Take away 8. We'll put him in the end. y equals. From last year we know a minus 2 times a minus 2 is a foil. I end up with a squared minus 2a minus 2a plus 4. My second thing that I have is the distributive law. So this is a FOIL, which is distributive law gone crazy. Negative 2 times a minus 2 is negative 2a positive 4, and that take away 8 wrapping around again. To tidy it up completely, we're going to collect like terms. I only have 1a squared. I have lots of a's minus 6a. My numbers are 4, 4, and negative 8, which is 0. So the value of the expression when x is equal to a subtract 2 is a squared minus 6a. Function notation can be intimidating, but it is dreadfully helpful. We are doing what we did exactly on the last page, but we are using new notation. Instead of y, which we tend to use all the time, we are going to give it a name. We're going to call this particular function f. And when I say f bracket x, we would say f of x or f at x, it doesn't matter. It means a function of x, and we're going to name him f. Given f at x equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 1, determine. So we're saying we have a function. It would pass the function test. It is a function in terms of the variable x. Its name is the letter f. So for this function named f, I am going to replace that x with a number 3. So basically that is saying, for function f, 
substitute x equals 3 and solve. It is saying all of that in one cute little phrase. I'm trying to sell you on it. f at 3 equals, I put a 3 wherever an x is, 2, 3 squared, take away 3 times, 3 again, plus 1. So I am determining that value equals 2 times. Order of operations says we do our exponent first, so I have a 9. Take away, I can do that one, plus 1. 18, take away 9, plus 1 is 10. F at 3 is equal to 10. F at minus 3, same thing. It means for the function f, substitute x value minus 3 and solve. f at minus 3 is equal to 2 times, put a minus 3 in for x squared. Take away 3 times, again, negative 3 plus 1. I just want to know you can do negatives. Negative 3 squared is also positive 9. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9 plus 1. 18 and 9 and 1 is 28. f at minus 3 is 28. These next three examples look quite hideous, really, but it's no different at all. We're going to call this function f again because, well, we're not very creative. There's its name. It is a function in terms of x. That means that the variable that you'll see in the function is the letter x, not a t or a q. And we want to substitute, wherever we see an x, a 2x. So f at 2x equals, put a 2x in wherever you see an x in the original function. Notice I really love brackets. I always use brackets equals. 2x squared means 2x times 2x, so we have a 4x squared plus 1. f at 2x equals 4x squared plus 1. Second one, f at x minus 2 is replace any x's I have with x minus 2. There. That is the expression, and we should always simplify its just good form. Equals x minus 2 squared means x minus 2 times x minus 2. Be careful with those. I would FOIL x minus 2 times x minus 2 is x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 4. Whoops. Like last time, put that all together. I have x squared. Put my x's in a pile. Put my numbers in a pile. f at x minus 2 is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 5. Last one, f at 1 over x is whatever is in the brackets, I replace x with that. x was originally squared and 1 was added, so that is f at 1 over x. I'm going to simplify that a little bit. 1 over x squared is 1 over x squared. You can write a square up there, it doesn't hurt anything, plus 1. f at 1 over x equals 1 over x squared plus 1. For practice with this function notation, because it is a little bit strange, your homework tonight is involving page 22, 1 to 3, 5, 7, 9, 10, 12, and 13. They're short and sweet, and they're just making sure that you understand what we mean by this function notation. That isn't all. That's the good news. I have a PDF of this particular page on the website. It looks very similar to this. You need to print that off or copy it out. It's not strenuous. These are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven very important functions that we are going to spend a lot of time with. These two in particular are not ones that are going to be on tests or final exams. But you would want to know what they looked like for a final project that we'll be doing in January. They could be very interesting and very helpful. You're going to be working with 
uh, partners in class tomorrow to create posters for one of these functions. We're going to share them all, use them as cheat sheets, and allow you to fill in this page in entirety. Good reference pages are 25 to 27. I would, however, like to do one of these with you, just so you know exactly what we're looking for. I have chosen to do the function in the top left function. This one is called the upper arm. of a hyperbola. What I would like you to include on this page is a possible diagram, the domain and range, which we're going to spend more time on tomorrow, table of values can be helpful, course its name, any maximum or minimum or lines of symmetry, I am using a graphing calculator. I'm not going to use a document camera today because of all the issues I'm having recording, so you're going to have to trust me. I have chosen, because I don't know what that value is, I have chosen on my graphing calculator to do the function, in terms of x, square root of 9 plus x squared, just to get a sense of what this function looks like. When I drew a graph, I have a y-intercept of 3. Intercepts would be nice. And a gently curving hyperbola that way and that way. So I have its name. I have a diagram, which I should always label. I should put some values there. The domain and the range. The domain is all the possible x values. So the domain for this function is, well, anything is good. I will have x values going forever to the right, and I will continue to have a function. As I move towards the left, all those x values are possible. I will get an answer as I go further to the left as well. So my domain is any old number will do. That means any number in the real set is good to go. For my range, however, you will notice that there is nothing lower than this. There is this cap right here. And the function is entirely above that 3 line. So for my y values, y has to be always greater than or equal to 3 for this function. y has to be a real number. Now this doesn't have to be 3. I'm the one that chose 9 plus x squared. That range would always have to be the square root of a. Table of values would be a nice thing to add. And I'm going to do the function specifically 9 plus x squared. So minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. I'm going to start at the easy one. When x is 0, I don't have anything right here. I'm left with the square root of 9, which is 3. If I have a 1, my y value is the square root of 10, which is kind of an ugly number. 
3.16. When x is 2, I have 9 plus 2 squared, which is 4, which is the square root of 13. Three point six one. Values are the same when I square negative numbers. I will get the square root of 10 and the square root of 13. And we can see on our graph that the y values do repeat. But there is one y value for every x value. This is a function. There is a minimum value for this particular function. There is a minimum. Y has to be greater than or equal to 3. There is no max. It goes upwards forever. Are there any lines of symmetry? It looks like you can divide this function exactly in half. Fold your paper in half and it would match. It appears that there is a line of symmetry where x equals 0. Some of what you will be putting on your poster is conjecture from observation from the graphing calculator. Check with me as you create them and make them beautiful so that we can cheat from them. <laughs>